2002. Brian is a sophomore in high school, and his friend went to a midnight showing of a movie. And he said, is it better than the first one? And he went, I don't know. I think so. Maybe not. <laughs> Attack of the Clones! <laughs> We're here! We've made oh, it! it sounds like... Maybe. Sounds like that not. friend uh, reviewed the podcast for us, or reviewed the movie for us. <laughs> Which friend was that? Uh, he was just a friend from math class. I actually don't even remember his name. I think oh. it was Billy. Billy from math class. <laughs> I think it's it Billy, was Billy. Billy Math. Yeah, <laughs> Billy I re- Math here. I really don't remember. Like he, we were only friends in the one class, but I yeah. remember him going to that midnight showing and being so excited. This was the first movie I skipped school for. Yeah? It was the only movie I skipped school for. Oh, uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy for me. Woo. Oh, yeah. Every one of the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yep. Skipped a lot of school for Lord of the Rings. Mm. Uh, I don't think I skipped any school for Star Wars. I also skipped school for The Matrix. Kind of regret that decision. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine with Star Wars, even though it was this movie. I'm still fine with Star Wars being the sure. thing I skipped school yeah. for. Absolutely. Uh, so welcome to After the Hype. Me, your host is always Brian Dressel. With me, as always, is Chewy Darso. Hi. And Jonathan Hardesty. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> There you are. <laughs> uh, we're nearly done with the OT and PT. We've only got one movie left after this one. I almost wanted to just jump to that one instead of having to talk about this one. But unfortunately, here we are. Yep. Uh, here we are indeed. <laughs> so we're going to continue skipping Where Have You Been Doing just because it's just there's so much Star Wars to talk about. And, I and think we haven't been is, doing anything, so. Well, I mean, we are in the middle of a crisis. <laughs> like that's very important just to acknowledge that i am aware that it's happening i am watching it i know you have failed this <laughs> multiverse anti-monitor you have failed this oh i'm a, oh oh god you're real strong <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i but yeah so we're, we're just gonna dive right into episode two attack of the colognes the clones never attack. No. No, they really don't. They it's more don't. like the hiring of the clones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. The invoice so, of the clones. <laughs> yeah. So a Jedi who is dead. Cypher Diaz. We never got to meet. Nope. I don't know if they did this in the books. So. I assumed he was playing by Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, Cypher Diaz. Uh, did they do it in the books? Like, did they... I, I, stopped, I never read any of the prequel books. I only read the, the stuff around Phantom Menace. I, I stopped reading after that. Okay. Otherwise, I read uh, Knights of the Old Republic, Old Republic books, but never any like the yeah, prequels. Yeah, that was though. way before this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know anything about that guy. About Cypher Diaz? Yeah. Sean and, Connery? Yeah, and why he... <laughs> Darth whether Connery. Or not he was, whether or not he's the one that actually ordered the clones or not. Well, no, the, they were ordered by Palpatine, for sure. He was yeah. just using Sean Connery. I'm yeah. only going to refer to him as Sean Connery from here on out because <laughs> it just makes sense to me. And you're left to wonder, was that guy a Sith Lord? And Absolutely. And Palpatine was his uh, uh, apprentice or vice versa or what? The way that I see it and just diving head first into this whole thing. Although, no, we're going to hit a pause button. We'll come back to it. I... Uh, John, I believe it's your turn to just give us the briefest of brief brief rundowns of what actually happens in this movie before we jump all around the fucking thing. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> brief. And now, now I'm saying as brief as possible, because the last time I told somebody to break down this movie briefly, it was Graham. And he went on for 18 minutes. That's, 18. That's I remember that. <laughs> I cut it down to I two. I remember that fondly. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, there's an assassination attempt on Padme, and they try to figure out what's going on. And through some investigation and a bar, ch- uh, a space, ch- uh, a speeder chase, they find out that their cloner is making clones, and that uh, some Jedi named Cipher Dias Connery, you Thank know, you. hired him out, and that leads them all to the bug planet, and they get into a huge battle with clones, but the clones don't attack; they come to the rescue. So the, it's like attack of the ca- uh, the cavalry of the clones or whatever. Yeah, and uh, they give the the Senate or. Palpatine, they give him all executive power, and he's like, I'm going to get rid of it when I'm done. And it's like, no, he's not. And that's about yeah, it. Yeah, that's about it. Wow, that, that that really doesn't take 18 minutes. No. Graham, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> now, I uh, mean, I omitted some things. 
granted anakin skywalker and obi-wan kenobi but you know hey <laughs> yeah uh, they're there you know so it's... they're there they they were along for the ride yeah Django yeah. fett's there lots of people are there um there's actually a lot of people in this movie there's a lot of people <laughs> this, this movie is fucking packed to the gills and I, i'd say i'm being very generous here i'd say about half of it eh, yeah half of it is decent a little smidge <laughs> is great and the rest is hot fiery garbage Anything oh, to yes. do with Anakin <laughs> hot is hot fiery garbage. garbage. Um, but now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump back into the Palpatine because I, I like that discussion. <laughs> I like figuring out like where these clones so, came from. They say that I forgot his name again. Sean Connery. Sean Connery, <laughs> Sean Connery. <laughs> ordered these clones in the name of the Republic, and Obi Wan says, "But he died ten years ago." Whoa. Uh, beyond <laughs> just i just want to, everyone to know my wife just referenced the beyond i don't like that movie it's an amazing movie but it's a fun let's thing. talk about the beyond throughout no. the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but so this movie takes place 10 years after the, the order a lo- attack of the clone or <laughs> phantom menace ish it's supposed to take about yeah. 10 years after yeah 10 so about the same time that phantom menace happened these clones were ordered right so then you're like okay so did yeah Dar- it, it gets real <laughs> sticky <laughs> palpatine is a amazing long con guy he knows how to plan the shit out of stuff yeah and because he's manipulating the republic and he's manipulating the separatists to make this grand war happen so he can just take control of the entire universe yep and what I don't understand in this is why does he keep going after Padme? I don't get that at all. She seems like the one, like, her vote matters more than everyone. They don't talk about any other senators getting death threats all the time. No. My only thing is, is that maybe it's like she was like the one Jenga block in the tower that he knew if he could flick it, he could knock the whole thing down. I don't know why she's that block. Maybe, maybe he could feel it in the force that she's yeah. like this beacon thing that needs to be either destroyed or coerced. And no offense to Padme, because I don't think this is really, I mean, no, it is on screen. Maybe she's just the easy, easiest one to manipulate. I've come to the conclusion that she is, let me look up the word again. I put on Facebook. <laughs> well, no, let, let's save Padme because I, I want to stay on the, this the, the clone thing because okay. I, I actually I really love the discussion of like how the fuck did the clones even show up? Because if Sean Connery ordered them say ten years ago when he was either, I would assume he'd have to be Palpatine's. Obi Wan says I think he was already dead when he calls the Jedi Master. That's a, again. he's but. The 10 years is what throws well, it off, because when he's in the, the cloning facility, he says, Cypher Diaz, sorry, Sean Connery died over 10 years ago. So, like, the numbers are real squishy, and it's like, well, they could have ordered it 10 years ago, they could have ordered it 15 years ago. Sometime well, around to, there. Could it just be a bunch of bullshit? Oh, totally. I mean, like, that's... Like, to go Galaxy brain on, brain on it, maybe there is no Sean Connery. Sean Connery is just, you know... Uh, Palpatine trying to think really quickly, like, hmm, hmm, I need something, a name, a name. Uh, no, no, Con- they no, Connery. recognize that he was a real person. Yeah, Yoda and Mace Windu both remember Talk Sean Connery. Him. Yeah. So he's definitely a real person. He was definitely killed, and he definitely placed this order. He just did it under Palpatine's command. And at that point, you just kind of go, "Well, it happened some time ago," and that's all. That's the only <laughs> answer that will make sense. Is you know, some ish time ish ago. Oh. Yeah. I, I would say though that he doesn't have to be a Sith necessarily, especially with the imp- like the implications that Dooku is making towards Qui Gon that there was this kind of they were trying to separate from the Jedi a little bit and do things a little differently. He could have no, just been misguided. That's Palpatine's. That's Palpatine's plan. He, yeah, Palpatine's manipulating all yeah, of this. He's creating the Separatists. Yeah. Like that is all Palpatine's yeah. doing. Yeah. Like, he is creating the Separatists. He's so that creating he can... an environment to destabilize the government. Yeah, he's dividing and conquering. Similar sort of to, to, to uh, modern times. To Trump. Trump is Palpatine. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> too real. Too real. <laughs> you know, he's the smartest person in the except, galaxy. Except, Palpa- yeah, except Palpatine's way more intelligent. So the yeah, comparison and, starts to break down when you start getting smarts involved. It can string along a sentence. Um, <laughs> and doesn't spend time talking about how often we flush our toilets. I what the know. fuck? And anyway. I don't even know what that was. 
Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, it's one of those things where, like, sure, he might not have been a Sith Lord. He could have been just a Jedi being manipulated. heavily manipulated yeah. by what is arguably, and I, and I mean this as a compliment to the prequel trilogy, the greatest Sith Lord ever. Because, like, the, you can make fun of it if you want to, of, like, how good of a planner is he? Or you could just take it as face value of he's that good of a planner. Yeah. He's Palpatine. He he can do this. <clears throat> He knows how to destroy a universe. Yeah, and like I like that threat. I think that's an impressive threat, and I, I get on board with that. So I'm kind of okay with this whole, was Sean Connery a Sith Lord? Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't really matter because he's dead and the clone army's here. Yeah. So what his intentions were are void because his intentions weren't his own. They were Palpatine's. So Sean yeah. Connery is basically just like the screwdriver that got the screw in the wall. It's like it doesn't matter what he was trying yeah. to do. Well, that kind of ends up being what all these characters are in this prequel trilogy. Like, this is, you know, Palpatine's trilogy. Everyone's just the screw at the right time to get in there. Like, he's just using everyone. And that's, it was very apparent this time around. I was like, wow, this here, this here, this is all him. Oh, yeah. And, and And I also just love the, it's why I like Palpatine throughout the trilogy. And it's one of those things where, like, that's why he's my second favorite part of the trilogy after Ewan. Because it's. He's that good. Like everyone, he does. He doesn't give a fuck about anyone on his team. Darth Maul dies. Whatever. I got Count Dooku in the wings. And it's like he has everything prepared, and everyone is set up to fail but him. Count Dooku this whole time thinks that he's working for Palpatine and thinks that he is his apprentice or his second or his whatever. And Palpatine, Palpatine. the whole time is planning on having the one he actually wants, Anakin, Anakin, kill yeah. him. That has been the plan the whole time. I don't think it's a ha- random happenstance that, like, in the next movie that happens. This was the plan. Oh, he's being groomed. He's being he's groomed. Totally being groomed. Yeah. And Dooku is just I love that that's that their first like, scene together in this movie. It's yeah. like, I've been taking your advice, Master. And it's like, oh, God. Wow. Yeah. A lot has happened in these 10 years. Yeah. I, I've been taking your advice. And then, like, just that pure, buttery compliment language of the, I've said before, you're the finest young Jedi I've ever seen. And it's just like, oh, I can't believe they don't have you doing this and that. And Anakin's just like, yeah, I am great. I am the greatest. He's so yeah. unhinged. He's so unhinged. And like it's, that. Yeah, sorry, it's so interesting watching that, especially when he starts saying, like, I thought you said I was better than Yoda. It's like, well, yeah, Palpatine's been putting those in your mind. Like the the, the hubris that Anakin has throughout all this. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah. Now I recognize that it is very much fed by Palpatine. And it's. And, yeah. and I want to go back to the clones again. Please do. Because why is everyone just like, cool? Yeah, that makes no <laughs> sense. All right. So we got this right? army. So Sean you Connery made it, illegally made an army. And we're like, oh, well, that's convenient. We're just going to use it then. Who? Does no one question this? The motive, why it was secret, why he went into the Jedi database and dis- and deleted Kamino from the database <laughs> well, with that really smug w- librarian going, well, if it's not in our system, it doesn't exist. Yeah, that guy's a See, she's so that smug, woman. but she left the <laughs> Wi-Fi open. <laughs> yeah. She might be smug, but she left the Wi-Fi open. It's all her fault. <laughs> it, I just... It baffles me. Everyone's just like, well, all right. Like, and no one questions it. Nope. No one's like, "I wait, maybe we shouldn't fight. Maybe there's darker forces pushing us into I believe this. Yoda or Mace Windu goes, that's troubling. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> that's as far as it goes. Yeah, it's like, ooh. Hmm. That makes you think, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, all right, moving on. There's curious. A bu- someone Quite left a, curious. Someone left a bunch of guns in my bed. <laughs> Huh. Oh, someone's trying to break into my house. I guess I'll use them. It's, it's like the equivalent of like if the Godfather, when you wake up with a dead horse head in your bed, and you're like, I wonder how that got there. Anyhow, on to my Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even right know there. I had a horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think that deserves just a little bit more inspection. Yeah, a little but bit of thought. Whatever. But that's the problem with this movie is you really kind of have to go, Whatever. Yeah. If you're going to enjoy a, any of it, and that's what I'm here to do, yeah, you really just have to close your eyes and even just fucking leave the room at certain and scenes. So the what? Okay, with the whatever, that brings me. To, can we move into the Senator Amidala of yeah. it all? Because okay, <laughs> yes, yes. I have so much beef with so much about things that happen in this movie, and just her motivation doesn't make any sense. Unless so you she, consider her. 
a kind of fucked up person. She is. That's where I'm going to get to. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I still love Padme because, I don't know, I badass. want to. She's yeah. a badass, but she's got issues. Um, <laughs> she comes to Coruscant. Issues. She knows that her life's threatened, so she's still doing the decoy thing. A woman dies to protect her. Yep. She's like, I need to be here for the vote. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Rumble, rumble. This is who I am. Yep. Uh, and then I don't remember how it all shakes down. The Jedi essentially tell her, you should leave. Yeah, get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> and so she goes back to Naboo. And she talks to the queen. With and, Thirsty Boy Toy. Yeah, with Thirsty Boy Toy. <laughs> and then she goes, oh, I guess we should just go on a holiday. <laughs> she's just going to she's gonna just not do her job at all anymore. Yeah. I, yeah, fuck this job. I don't remember any of the motivation for all this happening. Going from I must be in the Senate to do my job to, all right, now I'm in my vacation home on Naboo. Well... I can kind of answer it a little bit with the bullshit that George Lucas wrote, which is very, very weak writing. But still, what happened was essentially they threatened her life too many times, so they went, let's get her the fuck out of here. And that was really all Palpatine's plan to get those two together because he knew that Anakin liked him and that would make him weak. So he wanted them together alone. So he sent her to hide so she can't do her job because if she's doing her job, then she's still a target. So how do you hide? You go out to the fuck fest. Like, that's just where you go. (laughs) But they don't have sex. They just, you know, they get real huffy at each other. Oh, they get huffy. And like, <sighs> in the middle of the night, dark, with the, the just the fire next to you. The fire of their passion. And she's wearing the most oh, they huff all over the place. looking, it's disgusting. beautiful dresses. BDSM-y. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a very um, good looking dress, oh, but so looks pretty. so uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's what she's wearing, like, as lounge wear. <laughs> it's like, oh, no thank you. It was dinner wear. <sighs> um... <laughs> But yeah, once we get done with the stupid, we're falling in love, blah. Then we get into, okay, okay, Padme is a warrior. She's really yeah. awesome. She's getting shit done. I-, I said it when we were watching it, and it's like pretty much from the, the moment they arrive in the Coliseum with the weird vagina, like, laden <laughs> balcony thing. It's beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah. Oof. <laughs> but like, ever from that moment on, the movie's firing in all cylinders, and it's not a bad film. Yeah. From that, it's just a solid space action film. Yeah. From there on out. But that's also when Padme's being a badass. Like, they even have, like, the like that wonderful back and forth when they arrive. Like, the, what are you doing here? Well, we came to rescue you. Good job. Well, that's <laughs> right. all. That's but no, Anakin I'm, and... But I'm just saying, like, that whole sequence is just great. And Padme's then, got a... What is it? A, a jump on it or something like that? Oh, she's on top of things. She's on top of things. She's on top of her pillar. She's, like, she's, a, she's faster than the Jedi at figuring yeah. this shit out. And she's just, she's capable. She does a great job. And it's awesome. But like the, that doesn't change the fact that not 10 minutes before this in the movie, maybe 15, we have Anakin standing in a basement going, they're animals. So I slaughtered them like animals. And he's talking about murdering women and children. And her response is, yeah, it's okay to get angry. But no, that's not her response. <laughs> That's where I get into, I looked it up. I looked up, what is a fetish for a threat of being murdered? <laughs> it is called, if I can say this correctly, autosassinophilia. That's a mouthful. A person is sexually aroused by the risk of being killed. Oh, so when he's like, I slaughtered him like animals, she's like, Oh, uh, say it again. Kind of. <laughs> but it's not just that. It's like her oh. whole life. It's put so yeah. much of that into... F- yeah, that, you're right, Chewie, well, you're right. That's what it is. She's constantly under threat of being murdered. And she seems to run into that. She thrives when she's almost dying. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's why she's so, kind of huffy. is because he's not trying to like be all violent and almost murdery. It's more like, all right, let's get to the murdery stuff again, please. Yeah, she likes it. Yeah. She like, really when, likes- whenever he like starts talking like he's about to totally like go crazy and blow shit up, mind she I just do. stands there and stares at him like mouth open every time when he's being a total brat about talking about his powers when he's feeding her at dinner. A pear. A pear. What a weird oh. dinner. And, and then he's talking that about is a how, weird dinner. And you're like he's so obviously this pot of rage that she any woman 
that is got a healthy sense of fear would be like, this is not cool. Oh, he drops red flags like they're <laughs> yeah. going out of style. Oh my God. <laughs> but then definitely, yes, the he lost control and killed a bunch of people and then she just comforts him. Oh, honey, we all get angry sometimes. Yeah, the response to that is, oh yeah, we all get angry sometimes. I'm going to get you a glass of water. Why don't you stay here? R2 started the ship. We're fucking yeah. leaving. Mm. <laughs> that right. should be her response. <laughs> yeah. Instead- this, this... They go to Geonosis together. They're about to get murdered in a coliseum. And, she's and, like, and that's when she professes her love to him. I was just going to bring that up. Yeah that, <laughs> yeah, that that makes so much more sense now that you bring this up. With that in mind, I almost like this movie more now. <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah. with that background. She is it. an auto-assassinophilia. <laughs> I mean, I think you nailed it. <laughs> it explains a lot about a character. It, it makes the performance not seem as yeah. weird. The it fe- really kind of balances everything out. <laughs> the fetish may overlap with some other fetishes that risk one's life. Such involves drowning or choking. She does get choked in the next movie. <laughs> I don't think that part turns around. Now. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, it, she's got to have that. She's got to get in. She's well, got to be into it. She does. It's, let's be fair. I mean, we'll discuss uh, Sith next week, but she has it in this movie. In the next movie, she's like, I don't have it anymore. And he's still super murdery. <laughs> Well, because she got preggers. Yeah. And then, you know, once you become a mother, you become very chaste and safe and docile and yeah. fragile. Right, and right. Like, <laughs> all the kink expires yeah. when you're pregnant. Yeah, because when you're a mother, you're not a sexual being anymore. You're just nurturing. Your words. Uh, <laughs> out of context, just look at all the people <laughs> that go to J-Lo in Hustlers and go, how could she do that role? She's a mother. Yeah, those people are fucked up. She's a badass. That's why she did it. Yeah. Um, so if that's Padme. That's Padme in this movie. That's Padme in this movie. <laughs> that, all that said, and, and like, I do have to say, even with this monstrosity of a character that's written, with some good moments, to be fair, Natalie Portman does the best she can. Oh, she she's an oh, A-class yeah. actress. Yeah, and like, it shows in this one. Like, we mentioned it last week, when, or I guess earlier this week, when we did uh, Phantom Menace. Like, she was okay in Phantom Menace. I still think she does a great job in this movie. Her character's weird and unbalanced, and it, but the whole fucking movie is. So it's like, if, she's... If she's not a fetish person in this movie, she's a... Oh, but I can fix him, yeah. woman, which is a whole nother problem. None of these. Uh, the other one is a far more interesting character trait to dive into, but I think George accidentally wrote that character and didn't intend to. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it worked. It's there on screen. Um, but, but you if, get the sense that she's actually, uh, as an actress, she's trying. She's putting everything into this. Yeah, absolutely. And she's bringing everything to the table. Yeah, and she's Granted, a, very, it's a very small table, but yeah. <laughs> But she's a very seasoned actor. I mean, she's been acting since she was a kid. She's been great her mm-hmm. whole career. So it, it makes sense that she can take this, like, soap opera drivel and try to make it work. And there's some moments that kind of ring a little false. Almost everything in Naboo. But there, <laughs> she does what she can, and I think it works. On the flip side, there's two parts of this relationship. And the other side is Hayden Christensen. Oof. Poor Hayden. Uh, and I've never seen him in anything other than these movies. So whenever someone tells me, he's actually a good actor. I'm he's... Like, Okay, I'll, a, I'll try to believe you. You didn't see Jumper? No. Okay, he's not <laughs> Jumper. Gonna, they removed the U from the posters, so I've always called it that. Although I clearly still pronouncing it. Whatever, it's funny in my head. Um, it works. I get it. Yeah. I. Uh, but he's not good in that either. He's not good in that either. Um, he no. was good in Shattered Glass, where he plays a news reporter. Didn't see that either. Um, that's the one where I watch. I'm like, okay, he does have some chops. Like, he's not the greatest actor in the world. No one's ever going to give him an Academy Award. But he can't act. Like, I can see why somebody thought, let's cast this guy. Uh, but the problem is, and I go back to Mark Wahlberg every time when I have to come up with an actor who's only good with certain directors. And it, there's something about the relationship between a director and an actor that's very important. Because the actor is relying on the director to help shape the best performance possible. And some actors can do it without a director and they're amazing. But some can't. Some need that support and that direction to be able to get the best performance possible and when your most famous quote as a director is uh do it again faster more intense we're gonna have some problems and oh boy did we have some problems with hayden christensen and i I want to talk about him kind of in two parts and i want to start with the the relationship part of uh romantic and then friendship because i think he does okay in the friendship aspect between him and obi-wan i don't think he's 
garbage. I don't think he's great. He's probably still one of the weaker of the actors. Very angsty. He's very angsty, but that's that makes sense because that's he's kind of an angsty teenager. So I don't really have a problem with it. But when it comes to him with Padme, it's fucking awful. Like, painfully... I had a hard time watching it this time around. Right? It, it, everything, everything with him and Padme, it was just I started like looking at my phone, paying attention to literally anything else. Like, hey, you he's know, my ceiling looks white. A, yeah. he's such a creeper. B, he's so whiny. And it's just like... He's whiny. He doesn't take no for an answer. He just starts touching her at times. Yeah. I'm like, you're supposed to be her bodyguard. And just like the fucking line in the beginning of the... Well, I was in there, but I don't think she liked me watching her. And it's like, can you say that with more oh. of an open mouth breathing? Just... <sighs> <sighs> like, I'm training for Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and, and I want to take this as like... I'm not trying to be mean to Hayden Christensen at all because I honestly believe that if he had a better director, this could have been a better performance. But the the writing for him is awful. Every single line he has about Padme is this like awkwardly like insult esque, desperate like, why doesn't she like me? I'm the best ever. She should be in love with me. Why isn't she on my dick right now? She liked me and, when I was younger. Yeah, she yeah. should like me now. But it's. It'd be one thing if it was like every now and then, like if he slipped into crazy because, you know, he has that edge, like that one foot in dark side the whole time. And like if he was a good guy most of the time, but every now and then, like a little bit of rejection or just maybe the wrong look at the wrong time. And he can just kind of and I, yeah, you know, we're having this good conversation. You know, she's going to eat this pear and I start showing her. She grabs a pear out of the air and I said, my fucking pear. And it's like, <laughs> 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 but like if there was like that, just like if you could see that there, there was a decent person that she could be attracted to that actually has legitimate feelings of love and not just lust of that was the hot girl from the past and I still love her, then there would be something there. And that's not what's on screen at all. It's almost like Lucas didn't know how to write a man in love unless he's just talking about her constantly in an obsessive, creepy level. And yeah, it also felt like he was trying to get uh, Anakin, like he was trying to bridge that gap between little little Annie and this guy now. And he didn't realize that there was 10 years and a lot more complicated dynamics at play. Like he still had one toe in that younger kid. Yeah. It was all like a kind of a babyish. And it was like, this isn't, this isn't playing the way you think it's playing on the page. I can never really rationalize the choices he made. It all because George is is been a married man a few times. Yeah, uh, so he's obviously romanced some people. But if this is an idea works. of romance, it makes sense why he's been a married man. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's just... there's also a lot of that that you forget though, like in terms of high school, the hormones, like the boy girl thing. Like you block a lot of that stuff out, so no. he's forgotten. <laughs> No, you don't block that. You you block a, the rejection out, I guess, but you don't block, like, how... I, I don't know how to describe it. This, <laughs> Money the, helps. The decisions are so poor. The type yeah. of person that he makes him appear to be is so unattractive to anyone that has a rational mind. And Padme's supposed to have a rational mind. Yeah. She is supposed to be a career woman mm -hmm. that thinks logically all the time. And now you're you're essentially telling me that the force is forcing these two to bang. They're not give, they're essentially taking the willpower away from both of these people and making them connect. Which, That's the only rational explanation I can come up with for this relationship. Beyond just it's palpatine. That's the the Palpatine is fit, is yeah. mentally of manipulating them too. That is possible. That's the only other thing I got. Because in the novels, you explore that Palpatine did have an obscene amount of power and was yeah. able to constantly work in the minds of all of his people. That's one of the reasons why once they killed Palpatine, they were able to win the war so quickly because suddenly all the coordination in the Empire was gone. Yeah, and the, that... <laughs> I'm fine making that leap in my head. Like, I can do that, but that still doesn't make the movie work. Because no. when it comes down to it... And it's this, a lot of leaps. It's a lot exactly. of explanations. But but yeah. staying on Anakin and moving kind of into uh, him and Obi-Wan... Uh, I know I was going to save Obi-Wan for the end, but it just doesn't work with the way this has been yeah. uh, kind of flowing. Um, but just staying on Anakin, the, the major thing is... If you want to treat the Star Wars saga, up until we decided to do the new tea... Um, is Anakin's story. I always took it as Luke's story, then you kind of change it, no, it's just the Skywalker family story, whatever. They keep blowing it up. They keep getting it bigger and bigger and bigger. But basically, when you brought in the prequel trilogy, you turned it from Luke's story into Anakin's story yeah. over six movies. 
and that's okay that's all well and good but if it is anakin's story for the before he turns to darth vader we should be rooting for him we should like him we should at least like him and i didn't dislike him as little anakin little annie yippee like he was fine but at this movie, this should still be kind of like, oh, I like him. I'm rooting for him. He does some things that I wish he hadn't done, but he's not a bad guy. From I'm the- resigned that he's going to be Darth Vader. Like, I'm resigned to his fate that I know is going to happen. And then this movie really drives it home. It's like, okay, he's yep. going to be Darth Vader. So, of course, of course he's got to do this. Of course he's got to be a dweeb. Yeah, and it's just like the, from the first scene with him, not in the elevator, but like from the first scene with him when he's like going to talk to Padme, it's like, fuck that dude. You just, you're never on his side. <laughs> I'm not. Never. Right. I'm not. Never. And it, it doesn't, it makes me upset because Darth Vader, when I first saw the original films, was a cold, calculated threat. Yeah. Not a lackey, not someone who is completely slave to his stupid emotions, which I know the four, the dark side is supposed to be about your emotions, but a lot of times... They're still supposed to understand their emotions. Yep. I don't get the feeling that there's any understanding in Anakin. No. Like, it truly just baffles me that he would continue but, to be trained as a Jedi. And that's that's my major thing. But kind of using that a little bit, and I, I, this is where I'm kind of... The movie had me for just a second with Anakin. And that's with him and Obi Wan, and specifically when they're on Coruscant, when they're protecting Padme, ignoring all of him. The talking chase about Padme. sequence for the bounty but, hunter. But that's what I'm talking about. So yeah. that chase sequence for the bounty yeah. hunter, you really see that friendship between him and Obi Wan, and you get that he's kind of cocky, he's kind of a little shit, but he's also incredibly capable. And you get why Obi Wan would be, you get why he wants to be with him, you get why they're friends, you get like this, this wonderful. Oh, he is hot shit. He knows it, but he also still needs Obi-Wan to train him. And you totally get that ebb and flow of friendship of them. During that one time. During that one time. But I love it. And then when it comes back at the end, it works again. And he's gone and done his crazy emotional journey. And Obi-Wan's still able to get him to snap to and do what he has to do for a little bit. Yeah. He still fucks it up. Um, but honestly, well, even their if I argument was Obi-Wan, I would be exhausted. Yeah. To constantly have yeah. to be like, no, stop getting personal about shit yeah let go <laughs> well, even of his your argument feelings. at the end his <laughs> argument at the end like i gotta we gotta stop for padme he's like no like that whole exchange was actually kind of stressful like it was yeah. tense and their relationship was so at play and like you said yeah it works those two together you you get it you get the glimpse you yeah. see you, you you see the the potential and that's the i mean i, I will sing ewan's praises all day fucking long because <laughs> he just he raises people up Maybe not to his level, but he everyone who's does in what a, he can. He does what he can. Everyone who's in a scene with Ewan does better almost every time, and it, it's just so impressive. You, even I like his scene with the CGI the diner guy. Yeah, I love that scene. It's cheesy, well, it's a little great. dorky, but it's yeah, fun. Dorky, yeah. And you get to see kind of what the <laughs> Jedi were supposed to be at that time. They're keepers of the peace, aka cops. Yeah, and it's like I, I, I get it. He's doing a little detective work. He has his informant, you know. I hey, like it. Obi-Wan. Yeah. Camino. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was great. And I, I think using him as this kind of like Beacon Boy Scout character who has to deal with, he was trained by a guy who kind of spit in the face of the rules, but still followed them for the most part. And he was determined to follow them. He wants to be a good Jedi Master who will be a part of the Jedi Council. And then he gets a Padawan who spits in the face of the rules. And he's just kind of got this sandwiched of like, why am I the only person who does things right? And he's like, I'm told to go to Camino. Okay, I'm going to Camino. I'm told to bring in Jango Fett. Okay, I'll bring in Jango Fett. Jango Fett ran away. I guess I'll go chase him down. And he's just, he's so good at his job. He meets Count Dooku. And he hates flying. He hates flying. <laughs> but he meets Count Dooku, who lays out a very rational, like, argument of like, no, we're friends. This is what's going on. Clearly, there's a Sith in the council, and you need to come with me. I'll let you out of this. We'll start discussing it. And he's so fucking good at his job. He's like, no, I'm never going to join you. Nah, bitch. I can see right through your bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. he And you yeah. buy it. It doesn't feel like cheap writing. It doesn't feel like lazy writing. It feels like, no, that's Obi-Wan. That's the Obi-Wan that we thought we'd get back in the first movie when we just got Padawan, the Obi-Wan, who was still great. Obi-Wan would be a really good Green Lantern. 
he'd be the best Green Lantern. <laughs> well, he could be Hal Jordan because there's always Hal Jordan. But you know, that's a different argument. Really, what you're uh, saying, Brian, is that this should have been Obi Wan's trilogy. I mean, I said yeah, it last week. I'll say it have next said week. It before, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's what it is. I mean, he does such a good job in this movie. He keeps you engaged, and his sto- his plot lines the most interesting one. Like following Obi Wan to Kamino to find out about the clones. That's how we started this episode because mm-hmm. it's the most interesting thing. Then we get Jango Fett, who's probably the most interesting character who isn't a main character. He's fantastic. Without him, you don't get Boba. And I thought a lot of people, when this came out, kind of shit on Jango Fett. And I'm like, I don't get it. Jango Fett's a good Neither fighter. Neither did I. He, he's an interesting character. And I love his arc of he got his own clone. I know Chewie kind of balked against it a little bit while we were watching it. But I've always loved that he wanted his own unaltered, unaltered clone. Um, and just to explain why, really quickly, is... I look at Jango Fett, who's a, he's a, we're assuming Mandalorian because he has Mandalorian armor and we should just assume that he is, but Mandalorians don't really take off their helmets and, uh, blah, 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 blah whatever. Um, remember? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really interesting character because of that clone, because it shows that he has the idea of legacy. He wants his legacy to carry on, but he doesn't want to deal with any relationship bullshit. He doesn't want to deal with getting a woman pregnant and he doesn't want to deal with any unforeseen circumstances he knows that he is perfect he is the best and why would he want anything but himself i think it's awesome and they don't explain any of that it's just there they don't have to explain a word it's just on screen i think it's awesome i love it it's my favorite part of this movie it's the one where i sit forward in the seat and pay attention just because yeah you don't need it spoken out you don't need it laid out it's just there and wow this the swagger on him just yeah. this like i'm a simple workman just doing my duty you know, like do my thing i'm, I'm doing Aquaman's my dad yeah <laughs> yeah but as soon as i get done here i'm gonna go stand by a lighthouse for like 20 years yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you're right like it's just like the like what a fucking badass always a pleasure to meet a jedi because you know he's in his kill him. in his head he swapped out the word meat for kill. Yeah. <laughs> Always a pleasure to kill. <clears throat> Sorry, meet a Jedi. <laughs> oh, those eyes! Like when he said that, I was just I got shivers. Oh, and I love that Obi Wan sees right through it too. Like they're just like, oh, we're enemies. Yeah. You know I'm here for you. I know I'm here for you. And the Caminos are just like whatever, as long as we get our money. <laughs> yeah. The Caminos sure scratching the, are really her neck right now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's an energy here that I don't necessarily like. You guys want to relax in our glowing chairs? <laughs> Would you like some, like, clone tea? <laughs> so outside of all of that, one of the most delightful moments in this movie. We finally got to watch Yoda fight. Oh, my God. And oh. <laughs> and he is adorable. Like, I just... I, always... I love his old man grunts. <laughs> In my head, the whole time he's swirling around, he's going, yippee! Woohoo! Ha ha! He's making the sounds of an old man getting up off the sofa, but over and over and over and over. (laughs) I I will say one special thing about seeing this movie in the theater was that moment when Yoda started fighting. The whole theater, in a unified moment, we just cheered. (laughs) It was so dorky, but it was was so delightful. We cheered and laughed. It It was like this universal, like, hey, this is actually fun. And it's one of those things where, like, because it wasn't in any of the trailers. We no. didn't know for sure that it was coming. There's some promo art with him holding a lightsaber, but it's like, well, it makes sense. He's a Jedi. He has a lightsaber. Yeah. But as soon as you get there, and Anakin just gets his ass fucking handed to him by Dooku, which I love. It's a very short fight. It's a very short fight. He's like, I got two lightsabers. He's like, no, you don't. Well, I have two arms. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. <laughs> uh, and then it's like, well, Dooku just won. And just that slow, like, when he walks around the corner, it's like, we're going to see Yoda fight. Yeah. This is going to happen. And Dooku knows he can't beat him in a saber fight. That's why he starts throwing shit at oh, him. Oh, yeah. but the, it's just, it's so fan servicey, but in the best way. Not like a, not like the new trilogy, which I'm not trying to take shots at it, but the new trilogy does fan service and kind of like a, like a look at the camera and go, ah, wank, wank. See what we're well, doing? Well, that one's, that one's also very nostalgic, whereas this is more like, I know you would definitely want this. You've played oh. the scenario in your mind. But Let me give you some of that. But it's just the line from Dooku. Just like the, clearly this can't be decided by our knowledge of the Force. But with our <laughs> skills, with a lightsaber. And you can just hear like the people in the audience like, fuck yes it can. <laughs> 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 we will see who's the best. And it's Yoda. We know it's Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I was given a gift that day. And it was the Yoda fight. It was so yeah, good. It was amazing. And then Count Dooku being a bitch. Ah, you can't win. I'm going to kill your friends and run away. <laughs> Very Sauron of you. 
and it has my favorite like moment where he just picks the cane back up. Yoda picks the cane back up and resumes his pretending to be like he pretend. slow. Yeah, he doesn't pretend he was just using the force before. This is him not using the force. This is him going, oh, God, I'm tired. <gasps> I'm going to yeah. feel that one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pull that out very often. Oh, my back, my back. I guess I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, the, the other character that, that really finally got a spotlight in this thing, after the last movie where I just kind of kept going the whole time, come on, do something. Come on. Little, come on. little Mace. Mace Windu. Yeah. Oh, yes. And just hit, it's another thing. Like, the, that's what I mean. The last third of this movie is great. And I will not, I'm not even going to back down from the word great. I think it's great. Uh, I said third, right? Not last last half. I don't know. Specifically third. Yeah. It's like the last half it's hour. last third. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, just like that whole, like, they're going to die. They're going to, and just the slow walk out of like, shit is going, shit is about to go down. And I just love the way that Mace Window comes out with the purple lightsaber, just at Jango's neck. And it's just like, oh, fuck. And just, I got chills in theaters the first time it happened as you just see around the Coliseum lightsabers. Just so exciting. It was so exciting. Oh, fuck. I love and hate the sequence because it's a wonderful sequence. It's awesome. Where it's the first time you see Jedi fight en masse. Yep. But then I could just start to get disappointed. I was just like, they're all dying. Yeah. And we're getting all these kind of like weird shots of some people that I don't know who they are and we hold on to them for a moment and they do a weird hurrah. Yeah, I assume it's uh, people's kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's this, mo- this movie was filled with shots of that must be someone's relative. Yeah. Uh, right. Roll call. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be in books later. Some of my least favorite parts of these this these entire three films is people sticking in their nieces. Uh, but Phrasing. Whatever. <laughs> Sticking in their nieces in this movie. Not, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Podcast one. It's but, over. So I was just sad that there's so many of them die right away. There, I can still p- pick out ones and be like, all right, you got your own comic book series after this. You got a comic book series after this. You got blah, blah, blah after this. I don't know. But... But how- you start out with like 100, 200 some Jedi and you end up with 15. I thought it was more like you end, you started with like 75 and ended with like 35. Yeah, there was less than 35 in that circle. But there was way less than 100 in the beginning, too. I felt like, I don't know, I felt it was like a it was lot. a lot to me. It was a shitload. But like, that's the, it, I think, given that it was just versus a droid army, I feel like more of them should have survived. I think they yeah. could have upped the ante instead of just droid armies. It should have been droid plus something else. Because with just a droid army, I'm sorry, Gun Guns won that war. And I granted they had some, they had some help from the people fighting in space, but still... Gungans fought that yeah. war. And if Gungans can take him down... Well, they were dudes. fighting the Geonosians, too. The the insect people. A little they were bit. Fighting. I mean, and some of the monsters were there, too. Like the big uh, like praying mantis sort of <laughs> thing. And they that were thing there. just kept going after Obi-Wan. Yeah, that thing was really mad at Obi-Wan. Yeah. <laughs> but, know, it, He's like, I saw you in train great, spotting. I want your autograph. <laughs> it's a great sequence, but I just didn't like some of the editing and visual choices like specifically the one jedi who just lands like i'm gonna take out count dooku i got this and then he gets shot to death and by he Jango was Fett. a member of the jedi council which yeah. means he's a high up master and he just gets shot a couple times and dies yeah like that was just that was way too easy that should have been dooku's kill yeah because that would have made sense dooku took out obi-wan and we saw how badass obi-wan was and you watch the next movie and it's like obi-wan fucking takes on grievous yeah so it's yeah. like so the the scale of like the, the the balancing, as it were, to use gaming terminology, is off in this. Yeah, for like sure. that that moment it's of badassery so where they get the lightsabers out, to lose so they can yeah. get saved. Yeah, right. Yeah. And like it would have been another one of those things where I feel like this was a, a note is what I'm guessing because I feel like the the script was written and they hand George handed it to maybe his, one of his wives, maybe somebody who's like it doesn't make sense that so many Jedi's died to fucking robots. And maybe they went back and added that one line from Mace Windu was like, I'm going to take whatever Jedi we have remaining. And it's like, oh, maybe he just took a lot of Padawans who just aren't quite ready. And that's... Most of them were Jedi Council members. But there weren't a hundred. There's only like 18 Council members. And if there's a hundred of them, that leaves a lot obviously of Padawans, 88 yeah. Padawans. So mm-hmm. maybe they're just all <laughs> slaughtering ganglings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh man, who's excited for this? I, I guess this is more like I do teenagerlings. Love Professor Yoda, though. Oh, I, I just love Yoda in this movie. Yoda in this movie is great. Yoda's so cute with the younglings. 
I Obi just, Wan lost a planet. He did. And I was like, oh god, you're so adorable. <laughs> it's so, it's like Hogwarts. <laughs> it really is. And what I, did we learn today, kid? <laughs> I also just love the, uh, the fucking, the map, the little marble that he's got. That, mm-hmm. Like he plunks in the thing. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, god, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be really cool to have. It's a combination of the marble from the good place and you know Tony Stark going. Poosh. Yeah. Jarvis. <laughs> Friday, come on. Jarvis' is vision now. Uh, yeah, well, he was that. Sure. Um, who else? Who else needs who it? Who else? Well, uh, a lot of the bad stuff wouldn't have happened if Jar Jar wasn't so easily manipulated. We've talked about Jar Jar. Um, That's pretty much everybody. So, so let's, like, the movie yeah. itself. Like, we, for the OT, we did a lot of, we didn't really talk about the movies. We talked more about our feelings in the movies. And I felt with Phantom Menace, that one deserved a little bit more of just deep dive because so many people hate it, and I didn't think it really deserved that much hate. Clones, eh, it kind of does. Mm. I can't really defend it. No, and that's kind of one, like, I just want to talk about the feelings of the movie. Because I, uh, to throw a quick shout out to our friend of the show, uh, Craig McFarlane from the front row, he recently just went through all these things again. And he said when he watched this one, it was way better than he remembered it like he actually kind of enjoyed it he enjoyed it the most out of the prequel trilogy and i'm not going to speak for him i don't remember his reasoning of it but there is something to be said that i think this movie definitely takes more of a beating than it necessarily deserves like no it's not a great movie yes it's probably the worst star wars movie but does that mean that the whole movie is bad like there are things that I enjoy. Like I like I've mentioned many times, the last third of the movie, Obi Wan is great. For me, I could enjoy this movie more if whenever Padme is supposed to be talking to Anakin, you just erase him <laughs> and she's schizophrenic. Yeah. So at least oh you can create a idea Padme of a interrupted. wonderful yeah. <laughs> a wonderful romance. That she is a part of. He might not be real, but you can imagine that his dialogue and motivations are better. It kind of ruins the where did Darth Vader come from storyline, but sure. Yeah. He can still, I, I say, Anakin can still be there. He's just not romancing her. Sure. If we take out that, I can just, enjoy this movie he's more. He's just standing at the gate to the Coliseum and she's like, I love you. And he's like, who are you again? What <laughs> is going on? Well, no, it's like, I'm just your bodyguard. Please yeah. stop. Talking like that. Oh, she wanted to switch places. Huh? She wanted to switch places. So she'll be standing there going like, why are you still in love with me? As she does throughout the majority no. of the movie. No, he. I'm just kidding. I'm, I okay. gotcha. I'm right there with you. I'm kidding. Yeah. You're confusing me. <laughs> I know. Anakin's just doing his job. Yeah. And then he will have a real motivation to turn into a bad guy later. Yeah. And not this stupid, poorly written romance that's like a five-year-old wrote it. But here's the thing. I hate the romance in this movie. Yeah. I hate it. I think it's yeah. terrible. I think it's one of the worst written romances ever. I think it belongs in the bottom drawer of a soap opera writer's desk when he goes, I think I can do better than That's that today. That's a turd. Uh, that said, I still like all of it more than what comes up next week for why Anakin flips to the dark side. Well, it's still the romance that he flips to the dark side. Ultimately, you've given him a better romance. I'm just talking about the scene. It's basically like, be bad. Okay. Should I be good? <laughs> oh. No. Okay. No. <laughs> and that's, right. that, that's, that's the, that's the question instead. Yeah. Should I be good? No, not now. It's time to stop being good. Yeah. Oh, but all right then. I can handle all the like weirdness of Padme's motivations yep. because she's just being emotional or something, I guess. Uh, I can ha- I the Camino stuff I enjoy. It's I cool. still enjoy the politics. I enjoy how Darth Sidious Palpatine manipulates everybody. Yeah, it's awesome. I can enjoy a lot about this movie. I just don't want to hear Anakin talk. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> and I think that's yeah. why on this rewatch I enjoyed it just a hair more than I have in a very long time because I can kind of segment that bullshit out. <laughs> I can just ignore the movie when Anakin and Padme are doing their like, I love you. We're going to sit in the hills and roll, roll, roll in the hay next to these big pig monsters. And it's like, okay, well now this. And he's going to pretend yeah. to die. And I'm going to pretend to die. And she's going to get like, whoa. <laughs> Romance. And it's like, okay, great. So that's when I'm playing a game on my phone. And then I can be right. entertained when it's back to Obi-Wan and Mace Windu and Yoda. And it's actually not that bad. Yeah. So and that's I think, yeah. Yeah. For me, it, it's. Every time I've watched these, every time I've come back after years, my opinion has improved. 
it's yeah. got, like I've been, I've become I've become more forgiving on a lot of these things. And like you guys were saying, I, I like there's a lot of these things I like in these movies, and I don't like other ones a lot. But I, yeah, these these rewatches get better for me because I'm all, like you said, segmenting it out, but also appreciating some of the ambition, some of the ideas that maybe fall completely flat, but they're there. And yeah. I've seen I've seen lists online these days being like, here's here's a new way to watch these movies. Take out the first two movies. And I don't think so. No. I think you keep these because you need all of these, whether good or bad, because it's all part of it. And you're getting stuff even though you're not liking it. You know, yeah. if that makes sense. No, I totally agree. So like, it, it might just be a, a watch it once if you're not a huge Star Wars fan, but I'd still give it the shot. Um I think we've said pretty much everything we can say about this thing. Uh, the only other thing that I was going to mention at some point was the color palette of this movie has always bothered me. I don't know why, but I just don't find it engaging. I find it's it kind a little of, all over the place. It's a little all over the place, and then just like I don't like the red. I feel like the red is just telling me to stop watching it. Well, it's supposed to be passion. It doesn't feel like passion. It feels like <sighs> stop it, stop it. Right. It's like yeah. I want to look at the screen more. No, stop. I think that's there's also I a shot of Padme in that like tick scene out in the field. And like they, it's it's a weirdly color corrected thing, and she looks so weird, like a shadow passed over the sun or something, and everyone just looked washed out. It's her mental ev- state. It's <laughs> yeah. really blurry. And it's her like he's not trying muddled. to kill me right now. Oh. Oh. I need to be in some sort of danger. Oh, he almost died. He I'm so excited. <laughs> his oh, he's talking about how unhinged he is again. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, you could kill me at any moment. That's such a funny Hot. way to put it. I think it's time for quotes. <laughs> quote, 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 quotes. And of course, of fucking course, I have my line. Shall I go with, aren't you excited? The best line ever written I in a Star Wars name. film. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. <laughs> it is one of my most quoted lines from all of Star Wars. I bring it up all the fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> if we ever go to the beach... God help me. I'm going to say it so many <laughs> and times. And then when we come back from the beach and get sand out of everything. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I can't that's stop. That's what you do. Uh, mine is the most accurate line in this movie. Stop looking at me like that. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Take the hint. Right. Either either say that you can kill me or that you've killed people or just get out of here. Well, that's just... That's the scene where Padme's trying to keep it together. And she hasn't realized her kink yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, she kind of, Yeah. She still has that kink because she's still putting herself in danger all the freaking time. Oh, yeah. She's still just like, I don't want anybody in my room while something's coming to murder me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to sleep so well. <laughs> We have a new can- canonical read on this. <laughs> Thirsty Padme. <laughs> Thirsty Padme. Always in danger. This is, this is truly her trilogy when we, talk, when we think about it. Uh, John, quote? Uh, it's one I, I've always liked ever since I've seen it in the theater. Is when he uh, Anakin finally catches up with Obi-Wan in the, sp- the speeder chase through Coruscant. He's like, what took you so long? Well, you know, Master, I couldn't find a speeder that I really liked. <laughs> and then he just keeps going on with like the right speed capabilities. And the line delivery is somewhat flat, but I just like that that exchange is very just quick and monotone. But yeah, the, the kind of <laughs> flatness about, makes it work a little better. Mm. Yeah, it, it comes across so funny to me every time I see it. Yeah, I dig it. Review system for this week. <sighs> I keep going back and forth on this one. <laughs> And I'm not really sure how how it's going to go, but we'll see. Who from this movie, as a representation for your feelings of this movie, would you clone? I was going to say how many clones, but then John's just going to say 27 again, so that's just going to be a watch. <laughs> <laughs> I never keep the number in my mind, so it would have been random. <laughs> it would have been 27. Uh, we all know it. <laughs> Probably. It's fine. Yeah. But who would you clone as a representation of this movie? I have my answer. I'll just go right away. I I just made this one up. This wasn't locked and loaded. And I'm going with Count Dooku. There'd be tons and tons of Count Dooku's. And that's because his character's kind of shit in this movie. It's not that engaging. He's kind of weird. I don't really understand what his goal is. But it's still Christopher Lee. And he's selling the fuck out of it. He's doing a really good job at nothing. So I wish there was something there. Because it's fucking Christopher Lee. But, you know... 
Oof. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with the the diner guy. <laughs> it's just it's garish ultimately, but every time you encounter him you're like, "Oh, that's nice. I I like this part. This part's interesting. This is funny." Or you know, you, your mentality about it improves each time you encounter it. Yeah. I'm going to go with C3PO when his head is put on the battle droid. <laughs> Wait, oh wait. my word! What is happening? <laughs> Die, oh goodness! Jedi scum! What, am I what did I say? That's not right. <laughs> we didn't talk about the droids at all. I feel no, we did. We didn't talk about superpower R two with his rocket boosters. Yeah, we didn't talk about. That he just totally forgets about it's after great. the next movie. Yeah, but that's, he, he trades them in. Feelings. Yeah, it, it's the befuddlement. The well, the action's really good. I guess I get into this for a moment. Oh, but no, this is still wrong. This is still very wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that works. I like that one. Chewie wins again. This was definitely your episode. Aww. Uh, I didn't know we had winners, but apparently we do. <laughs> and you're them. Um, them, it, who? I don't uh, know. That's it. We did it. We attacked the clones. And we're well, rather... No one attacked the clones. No. <laughs> Invoice of the clones. Yeah. Invoice of the clones. Yeah. Arrival of the clones is more of what it is. Backup clones. Yeah. Uh, and it's fine. <laughs> Uh, so we'll do it really quick. I'm pretty sure I know the answer from everyone around the table, but we got to do our favorite new segment of Do You Recommend? And uh, I'm going with a very cautious, if you like Star Wars or you are in, into the story of Star Wars, yes. If you are really just think you're going to be an OT person, I think the Attack of the Clones kind of makes the prequel trilogy not worthwhile. But if you really want to see the whole story, then yes. But if you think you can just get away with the original trilogy, I'd skip it. I think it's worth one viewing to get some valuable information. To understand where the sand line comes from? <laughs> and yes, that's things. the crucial one. <laughs> but after that, and, and this, this is new a canonical great Star Wars angle, movie to you know? watch without sound on. Sure. So then you can imagine... That Anakin is saying good things. In your head, you could come up with your own dialogue of what might Anakin be saying right now that is a sane person. Whoa. And- well, sand <laughs> is rough and irritating, and it does get everywhere. To try to make it so that when he, when they're at her vacation home, and she's talking about something, something, and then he starts touching her back, it's not super creepy and awful. <laughs> Fair enough. You've got a mosquito on your back. Let me brush it off for you. Yeah, yeah something nice. Speaking of mosquitoes, oh. sand. <laughs> uh, so, John, I think I know where you land on the do you recommend list, but you might as well answer the question. Uh, yes. I mean, that, there's no surprise there. But because I think overall you need the bad with the good to understand, like to really appreciate the good. So, yes. Um, so if we're going by you can appreciate the better movies by watching this movie, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. With, with that in mind, then absolutely fucking loot. <laughs> Makes all of them that much better. Watch this one and then watch Solo and go, oh, Solo's not so bad. Just imagine Anakin in this movie trying to run Matt's Jenner or so. Can you imagine Anakin and Kylo just talking? It's like, I'm angsty for no reason. I'm angsty for reasons. <laughs> Let's take our shirts off and shower. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of them will look nice and have And then really you just cut hair. to Snoke playing with action figures, being like, oh, yes. Kylo, oh yes, Anakin, oh, I'm I will Snoke. take Kylo's angst over Anakin's angst oh, yeah. any day. Kylo's angst is actually rather well written. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan it of the new trilogy. It is way more threatening. Yeah, I'm not a gargantuan fan of the new trilogy. I like uh, Jedi, but Kylo's a well-written character. That's how you write angst. Well, some of his angst and whatever. Yeah. We've already talked about it. Yeah. We've been there. Go yeah. back and listen to it. Yeah. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Time for <laughs> plugs. <laughs> Plug it in, plug, plug, plug. Watch Crisis. Watch Crisis. That's honestly my plug. I'm like that. I, I I did not plan that John would be able to guess my plug, but that is my plug. <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Earths. I have absolutely nothing to do with it, but fucking watch it. It's awesome, and you would not believe what happens in the first episode. I'll be as clickbaity as possible because you honestly will not believe what happens in the first episode. Batman and Robin consummate their love for each other. It's super graphic, oh, full penetration, <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> Toss those salads, boys. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> Robin, like Padme, Golly, likes the thought of being killed. on the CW. 
<laughs> but no, seriously. CW has really changed. Yeah. Seriously, it's awesome, and you should really watch it if you've ever been a fan of comic books. That's my only plug. I'm not going to plug anything else on my network like I should at this point. Watch Crisis. On Infinite Earths, on the CW Seed app. No, just CW app. Yeah. Yep, two different apps, not the Seed. Oh, not really? that one. Yep. Oh, Has okay. Has it been fully seeded? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> No, but Burt Ward sure was. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, oh, I'm boy. just going to say watch Superstore Thursday nights. Cool. And that I'm out. And John? Yeah, watch Superstore too. Okay, cool. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. Tune in next week for the last episode of ATH for a little while when we discuss Revenge of the Sith. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.